We know from the, the gospel text this week that Jesus is experiencing a challenging time. The beautiful passage that we read today is a moment of prayer, a moment of intimacy with the Father. But in today's text, Jesus is speaking from his heart at a time of personal struggle and frustration based on recent, recent experiences. The experience that the rabbis and the wise men have rejected him, but the simple people have accepted him. It's a prayer of praise and thanksgiving, and it's most important that we recall that in this time of discouragement in the midst of frustration, there ought to be praise, there ought to be recognition of the unfailing and ever-present love of God. And that's exactly what Jesus does. But it, even more than that, consistent with the way he teaches us that the other is the focal point and ought to be the focal point of our service, of our attention. In the prayer, the other is also the focal point. When Jesus speaks of the wise and the intelligent, his reference is to the teachers of the law, the high priest and the scribes. And the reference is to a minority who exercised social and religious power at that time. They're the ones who sit on Moses' seat. They're important, self-assured people who tend at times to despise the poor and the marginalized. They consider themselves to be the recipients of God's revelation and the experts in its interpretation. And Jesus is really challenging their authority and above all, their arrogance and their conceit. But it's more than that. There's another teaching that we find here that's very particular to Jesus. He's telling us that the divine revelation and true wisdom comes through the lowly, comes through the humble. He's already taught us that in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the humble in heart. See, Jesus appreciates the humility of the little ones. Scholars tell us that the word that's used today, the little ones, the children, the ignorant, was a word that was used by the, by the scribes to describe those who they felt should follow their ways. They thought that they were incapable of following the appropriate path and they needed their guidance. So the term really the little ones is not children. What it refers to are the poor, the hungry, the afflicted, to sinners, to all those people who remember the parables of the banquet, to those who are not invited. They are the little ones. These are the people that Jesus reached out to, and the teaching of the same gospel tells us that when we reach out to one of them, we do it to God. When did we see you hungry, naked, without shelter? When you did it to one of these, the least of my the little ones, you did it to me. But we must be careful to understand that what Jesus is teaching, he's not saying that ignorance is a virtue, nor is he saying that being wise is a character flaw. What he's condemning is intellectual pride. It's been said that the heart, the heart, not the head, is the home of the gospel. A person may be as wise as Solomon, but if we don't have simplicity, if we don't have childlike trust in a God who loves, protects, and guides us, then we shut ourselves out from that experience of God's revelation through the little ones. In the reading from Exodus, we see very clearly God's commitment to the cry of the Israelites, the little ones, the poor and the oppressed. The mission given to Moses is quite clear. I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And Moses responded with a question that mirrored, really, his, his insecurity. Who am I that I should go? And then we see very clearly God's commitment and promise to be with Moses. I will be with you. And when we look at the people that are so key throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, what we find is always when they receive a mission, they also receive that promise that God will be with them. To Joshua, God gave him the mission to continue the work 
the task given to Moses. And he gave the same assurance. As long as you live, no one will be able to stand against you. I will be with you as I was with Moses. To the prophets, the same. We remember the words of the prophet Jeremiah, and this, particularly the anxiety that Jeremiah had, being just a young person. He said, Do not say that I am a child. Go now to all those I send you, and say what I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. With Jesus, we see in the descending of the dove, and we listen to the words, You are my son, my beloved, my chosen one. God is present. We see it in the beginning of the mission that was given to Mary, and the words given to her, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. We recall the encouragement that Jesus gave to his disciples. And he said to them very clearly, Teach them to fulfill all that I have commanded you. I am with you always until the end of the world. And so it is true of us. Each of us has been invited to participate in the mission of God, in the mission of Jesus. Each of us to live out our baptismal call. And so we too are invited to leave ourselves open to leave ourselves vulnerable, vulnerable to God's grace and allow ourselves to be the instrument that God has asked us to be. I've told you before, there's a little sign on my desk, and I repeat it again today. It says, we remember that the will of God will never lead us to where the grace of God cannot sustain us. We remember that the will of God will never lead us to where the grace of God cannot sustain us. Please stand. We pray this day for the many intentions that we have in our heart, and we particularly remember the people who join us via television, and the many intentions that they have asked that we remember in this celebration of the Eucharist. For them and for all of their intentions, we pray to the Lord. We pray this day for all those who have lost their lives in the service of this country, in the service of the gospel, in the service of others. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for the grace for each of us, that each of us may be a peacemaker and bring peace in our homes, peace in our neighborhood. For that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.